welcome to another episode of the Twin Stitches Designs Podcast. My name is Julie and I'm the knitwear designer behind Twin Stitches Designs. Today we are Sunday, November 1st, and I think it's episode 26, if I'm not mistaken. 25 or 26, around those numbers. And you guys, I have some fun things to share with you. I have some finished objects. Um, we have some prizes that came in the mail that I want to show off to you guys. Um, I also have some quilting all the way to the end to show off. So let's just dive right in and get started. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry, both as Julianne Knitter. I will link everything I talk about down below this video. If you have any questions, um, definitely ask them there and I'll answer as soon as I possibly can. Today, um, I am wearing my autumn tweed pullover. So this is a new pattern that's going to be coming out November 18th. I uh, No, November 14th. November 14th. I originally said that it was going to be coming out November 8th, um, but I have a little mini version for kids and I kind of wanted them both released at the same day. So I decided to push this one back a week and it is going to be coming out November 13th. So if you are not already, sign up for my newsletter. The link is down below and you, um, because you'll be getting an email as soon as it comes out as well as a special coupon code when that happens. I knit this out of Knit Pick City Tweed DK in the main color Obsidian. Uh, the pink is Primrose. And that one is snowbank so i'll get up and show it off it's really a, a nice pullover full length really nice long sleeves um really fun simple color work yoke really really love this i really love the color work yoke and i absolutely love the way that the dk like the tweed flex are playing with color work i'm a i love tweed i love tweed yarns so much so this one i mean i was just match made in heaven. Uh, on the FOs, I finished my little version. So I decided to make this pattern both as an adult and a small child, toddler version. Um, and then I asked my friend to knit up the other sample for me. So this one is the one that I knit up in the last podcast. I think I was finishing off the body and I just needed to make the sleeves, I think. So everything is done. I just need to weave in my ends and block it out. Um, but this little version is done. So this one, uh, the main color is blue blood. And then I use the obsidian and snow bank. So kind of the same as this, but with the different color. So it kind of really gave that nice different type of contrast. Um, I also changed up the chart a little bit just because this one was so long that it physically wouldn't fit um, on the yoke for a child version. Um, so this pattern will be coming out one to two year old, two to four, four to six, six to eight, and eight to 10. I was not able to grade this pattern lower um, because of the length of the yoke. Um, it just would not fit for those little smaller sizes than one to two year old. So like I said, this pattern is gonna be coming out at the exact same time as this one. So this is the version that I knit up that you've been seeing um, all the time. I will put that on the ground. And then this one is the one um, that my friend knit up. And this main color, oh fudge, I know it. Anyways, we also used um, obsidian and snowbank so that they would really look the same. Um, it's a purpley, it's more of a purpley than a mauve And I wanted them, I wanted to use two different colors so that they would kind of look the same but kind of different so they would have like cute, each, each girl would have like their own sweater. I'll put it all on the down low. So again, different type of color work, but you can see that that's an adult version and this is like the mini version. So you have the same here. And these are just kind of like put a little bit smaller. I love this so much. I can't wait to go take out some photos um, with me and the girls in these. So yes, this two patterns are gonna be coming out November 14th. So mark your calendars for that one. You guys, November is going to be, November and December is crazy for patterns. There's no way I could space these out. Like I, it's crazy, crazy. There's some new things coming. Um, I have a new collab with Laura that's going to be coming out. I also have, um, that I've been kind of teasing a little bit. Um, and I also have a new pattern club that's going to be coming out very, 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 very soon. Um, probably this week that I will be announcing that pattern club. So get on my newsletter, like get on it because you're going to be notified first. Um, yeah, so those will all be coming out. And then I have like 
the next sweater that I'm going to show off, that one's going to be coming out December 3rd or 4th. Then this pattern is coming. Like, it's crazy. There's so many pattern releases. So get ready for an awesome, t like, the next two months. All right. Take a drink of water. It's water this morning because it's, like, 10 a.m. We're not into the wine yet. <laughs> That'd be a little crazy. All right, next FO that I have and is being released today is the last pattern in the Coffee House Sock Club. The Coffee House Sock Club is something that is so near and dear to my heart. I absolutely love it. Um, it's been the second year in a row. We released out three different sock patterns, brand new, September 1st, October 1st, and now November 1st. And they're all inspired by coffee. This year I collaborated with some amazing makers. Uh, Lizzie Ann Yarns did all of the sock sets. Tough Woolen said it had some amazing scented hand bombs. Little Wolf Knit had some credible candles. And then the Kitchen Sink Shop had some bags. And you guys, I mean, you blew us away with all of your support and love for the club. So thank you so much. And I hope that you guys will want another one next year because we totally got to do an annual thing. Um, so yeah, so this is gingerbread latte socks and these um, came out today. So these dropped. I'm going to take one off of the blocker so you can really see the details in the front. So it's some very simple cables with some twisted stitches. It is so much fun to do. And this is in Lizzie Ann Yarns in, her gin in their gingerbread latte colorway, which, you guys, is so beautiful. I don't even want to wear these socks. I just want to stare at them all the time. Love the light speckles. And then did a contrast heel and toe. So that's this pair of socks. Um, yeah. All of my pairs of socks are knit on 2.25 millimeter. Oh, I'm a little. Bring this up a little bit. Boop. There we go. Um, all my socks are knit on 2.25 millimeter needle, 56 stitches for my for my size, and yeah. So I do a uh, heel flap and gusset, which are instructions in all of pretty much all of my patterns. And yeah, I just really really love this. I absolutely absolutely love this pair. And before you ask, my sock blockers are from Etsy. Alex Design creates. Alex creates. Alex design something like that so yes absolutely love these these were finished a while back but I couldn't show them off because they weren't released yet so um, yeah I'm gonna be sending out the emails right after this podcast to everybody so you'll have a chance to see them before and um, this podcast so you'll see love them my sock knitting mojo has not been very high because I think I've just knit so many socks that at the moment I kind of need a little break from socks from all the time. I'm really into garment designing and I also really love designing things for the girls. So it's been a lot of fun, but I've been um, doing some things in the background. So I finished two other patterns that I can't show off um, that are for a pattern club. So those two are done and that I worked on. Um, you'll, you'll, you'll be seeing them soon. Don't worry. Um, do I have any other finished objects that I can share? No, that is it. Uh, the whip that you saw the last time, and I'm almost done, is my Swanchito sweater. So this sweater is coming out, like I said, December 3rd, and it is knit out of Coast to Coast Yarns, who is Erin, in the main color Rust, Cabernet is the purple, and then, uh, in depression glass which is kind of the speckly so you guys one sleeve is completely done and then the last time I told you that I just wanted at least to pick up the sleeve I decided I tried doing magic loop for the sleeve and then I just found it was getting a little tedious so I ordered on um, just eBay some 12 inch uh, high high sharp interchangeable um, not interchangeable high high sharps 12 inch circular needles and I absolutely love doing these for my sleeves. I think I have like US 6, 7, 8. 
and I think I have a US 5. So it's great for all of those DK worsted sweaters that I am doing. Um, yeah, so, and I'm just about to decrease and start the ribbing. So all of that is done. And I've just been doing this from time to time, picking it up. Like I said, it's coming out December 3rd, so I'm not really worried about, you know, a little, a little cough. Um, it will be, it will be done. Don't you worry. <laughs> so yeah, so that is all going to be done and I'm really excited to wear it. I absolutely love this sweater so much. I want to wear it today, but I can't. That's okay. So yeah, so this sweater is going to be coming out, like I said, in December and I'm knitting the body on a U.S. US 8 and ribbing on a US 6 and it's DK weight if I didn't mention. Yeah, I think it's US 8 and US 6. So yes. Oh, I love I I'm really into designing sweaters at the moment. It, there's something about it that is so satisfying. Um I feel like I'm in a groove where I have so many design ideas that I want to get done and I'm just trying I mean, I don't have enough time in the world to get them all out, but, um, yeah, I just, I don't know, there's something, there's something with the designs that I'm really drawn to sweaters at the moment, more garments and things for the girls and all of those. And then heavier weight yarns. I'm used to knitting with fingering weight yarn and lately I've been really drawn to like DK worsted. I'm loving those right now because they knit fast. Um, they feel comfortable. I really love those right now. So I find summertime, I love a nice like fingering weight tee and fingering weight sweaters, but I find in the winter, I'm really for those DK and worsted. I find like kind of my designs shifted a little bit, which I'm totally for, and I'm really loving that right now. So yeah, enough on that. So that is my sweater. And like I said, this one, December 3rd. Put that on the ground there. That one doesn't have a project bag at the moment because it's so big um, that it barely fits in any project bag. So I kind of just like carry it around the house <laughs> at the moment. Um, the last, oh, well, I, I have one FO, a dishcloth. All right, so I've had some, I'm, I've had some questions on people because I posted a photo and people asked, how do you get your dishcloth so square? I don't, I don't, okay? They're not perfectly square. All you do when you finish them, um, and I've heard multiple people say this, you just stretch it out. Like, my tension is not perfect. Like, I stretch it out so it kind of looks square, but once you finish your dish cloth, it will not be square, unless you're some magician. Um, I just kind of like fold it over, and I make sure, and I kind of tug, and then I fold, and I kind of tug, so that it kind of, it, it folds up really, really nicely, so it's gonna be added. Look at my little pile right here. Look at how beautiful that pile is. So it's gonna be added on. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, my dishcloths are not square at all, but I just tug, you just tug and, you know, maneuver them. I find with cotton, you can really do that and you just kind of shape it into the shape that you want. So yes, this is in my Daisy Girl company bag. Um, and then I had started one, but my needles aren't there because I needed it for something else. So I just decided to rip it up. Anybody else? I, I just ripped it out because I needed those needles right away. So do I, did I put them back in? Of course I didn't put them back in. That would be, that would be really good if I would have put them back, but I didn't. So I need to go find those. Um, I knit my dish cloths on a US 8. And this one, um, this one is Dishy Twist, uh, which is a worsted weight yarn. And it is Knit Picks um, Silver, Dishy Twist. My bag is a mess. I abs there we go. Absolutely love Dishy for dish cloths. Um, they have, like I mentioned previously, Dishy Twist, Dishy Multi, and Dishy Solids. And this is my Dishy stash right here. All of that is Dishy. Um, definitely gonna ask for more because and order more because I really love it and I think it's great for time to time when you want to knit on something just mindless. And I love it between projects. It's been kind of my little go-to that I'm really enjoying. Um, this is in my Daisy Girl Company bag, which is um, Sherry and was gifted to me last year. And you guys were November 1st, so it's totally appropriate to still have this. And actually, like, it looks like we're getting towards Christmas. <laughs> but I use it year-round. I really, really, really love her um, peekaboo bag. So, love it. 
Wow, we're just going through this. I'm already on my last whip. Um, all right, update. Stephen West Mystery Knit Along totally failed. I, after the last podcast, I just, I couldn't make up to it. I did a, did I show it to you guys? I did a mistake. Let me, let me grab it. My Maple Moose Fibers bag, which I've had for years and years and years. Um, yeah, so I had originally started the Mystery Knit Along and I was planning on go doing it, doing all of it. And I decided to use Knit Picks Muse, an exquisite Hawthorne in North Star and Hawthorne Speckled in Spark. So this was my color and then I had a bright green that I was planning on putting. My first, my first problem was I didn't like my colors together, how they were working up. I really loved people who had a lighter main color than a darker one. Um, so this is how it worked up. So this is clue one. So don't, you're not going to get spoiled anything because the shawl's done right now. So this was clue one and I didn't like how dark it was. That was my first problem. And then my second one was we were watching Star Trek Discovery, the new season. And I was like, I can do this at the same time, which no, no, you can't like just work stuff round and around. Don't try to do any complicated things. Just, just don't like, this is what I needed to tell myself, but I did. I, I tried. Anyways, I screwed up. So, and let me, let me show you my mistake. So you see here, these little things, how they're centered, okay, that's centered. Look at that. This is not centered. And then you want to see worse. not centered one bit like this is supposed to be like here oh this one's bad like it's supposed to be like over here so anyways i screwed up like two three like repeats down and i didn't have the energy to rip back i just didn't if i would have like been absolutely in love with my colors i think i would have totally ripped back really taken the time but i wasn't i wasn't in love with my colors um, do I love these colors together? Yes, I do. But I think like I would have loved maybe the spark as the main color. And then what also I, I got really upset with was he said, pick a skein of mohair and then add it in. So I thought, okay, perfect. I picked one that was identical to this. But he didn't tell you that the mohair should be with color three. Well, I didn't know this. Like, and then I was already picked this as my color two. And then when we got to the, the third section, he's like, you can add the mohair here with your color three. And I'm like, well, my mohair was matching with my color too. Like, I don't think a mystery knit is for me. I love the ending shawl. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. I just don't think it's for me. I would like to really plan out my colors. I wanna make sure, because I'm using a lot of yarn. It's five full skeins of fingering weight yarn, and I just wanna make sure that the finished shawl is something I really wanna wear and is me. And I just didn't feel like this was me. I just didn't. I, I look at it and I'm like, meh. It's beautiful, but it's not my colors. Like, it's not my jam. So, yeah. I'm gonna leave it in its bag until there's a nice day where I want to rip all that back. Um, and then put the skeins back into normal. But that this, this is gonna stay a while, okay? It's gonna stay a while because I don't have the energy to rip back. I was disappointed that I wasn't able to make it, but you know what? As soon as I gave up and I said, no, I need to focus on more designs. I felt like things like just uplifted, like off my chest. I was like, I can breathe that I didn't have to worry about like ripping back, trying to make up, trying to catch up to clue two, trying to catch up. And I just felt like it was just stress. I didn't really need at the time. Not to say I did not love the shawl because it is beautiful. And I eventually want to make it because I mean, Stephen his patterns, he's, he's a genius. He really is. The way he writes up his patterns, I have no idea where it comes from. Like he is an amazing genius. So yeah, that's the update on my West Nets because that ain't happening. All right. So the next project, I completely forgot to share it on the last podcast. Um, this is in my kitchen sink shop bag that Garlene made for the coffee house sock club this year. So this was one of her bags. Really, really pretty. And she has her fun little logo. Um, so this pair of socks I am knitting up 
for my hubby. Let me just grab a sock blocker. I'm, I'm making for him out of sock blanks that I had tubed up last year. Last year I had um, asked, uh, I think it was Freckled Whimsy, uh, to do up some sock tubes for me. So these sock blockers are, are too small for his feet, okay? So, but I decided to use up a skein of Felici. This is in Baker Street. And then I am using two different colors for the heels and cuffs. So he picked out this one, which is Nitpick Stroll in um, Tweed Rabbit Heather. And this one is just navy. So I finished one sock. And I used Kirby Werby's Afterthought heel, um, Afterthought, was it, Fre yeah, it was Freckled Whimsy that I purchased. And I do the, the Kirby Werby um, Afterthought heel to cut them in and everything, to calculate how, how long and all of that. Now I did mention last year that I was not impressed with the gauge. It is so loose. Um, I would not do more sock um, tubes from Freckled Whimsy just because I did not like the gauge I got at all. Um, this is way more loose than I would ever knit Eric, my husband. So what I'm planning on doing is I actually plan on wetting them and shoving them in the dryer. I know some people might cringe to that, but I do find that Felici, um, Knit Picks, Felici, Stroll, all of those, Regia, Opal, you can totally wash, machine wash and dry. And I find when I put them in the dryer, they kind of like, whoop, and I find they get at a really, really nice, um, better tightness. So they fit way better because you guys, this is just ridiculous. So I was really disappointed. Like that is, like that's huge. Um, and my husband doesn't have like that big of a feet. So yeah, one is done. And then I finished the toe on the other one and I'm gonna be cutting in. So this is literally only how long the sock blank is. And what I'm doing is I'm doing a full pair of men's sock out of 50 grams. I had two balls, so they were both done differently in two different like tubes. So I am planning on knitting up a pair for my dad and then also a pair for Eric. So I'm gonna be using kind of the same colors, contrast colors. My dad probably won't like this one, so I'll just use like kind of a navy for all of it he's more he's more plain um yeah so it is not very long so I decided to do two 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 inches for the cuff so it really brought it to I want to say like six and a half inches because it was only about four some inches so yeah so it really gave length to the sock that I like um yeah so you really don't need a lot of yarn. You can have fun, well, depending on the size, but for my hubby, he is a size nine and a half or 10 men's. So yeah, I'm gonna cut in the heel and then I'm just gonna knit however much I need with the contrast, about two inches. And it gives me a really nice pair of adult socks out of 50 grams of yarn. If you use contrast heels, toes and cuffs. Um, I really love doing that. I find that I get a lot more out of my yarn so yeah, so I have my needles in here. I just have not literally picked up um, where I need to for the heel and then the cuff. So I might do that tonight is just at least pick up for the cuff and get the cuff done and started. So whenever I want to pick up, like this is kind of like my dishcloth knitting, same concept. I know how to do it. It's very simple. I just need to pick it up. And then whenever I need to, I can just, you know, knit round and around. Um, really enjoying that. But right now, like at night when we're watching TV, I really love the Swanchito because it's on a tiny 12 inch circular. So it's so simple and mindless. And I think that's what I need at night. So I think this is going to be fun to get off my needles. I'm planning this, um, for Griff knits, um, for Christmas. I have two more sock lengths to do one more in Felici. And I'm trying to remember the other one. The other one I think was some random opal. So those will all be done for Christmas socks for uh, the men in my family. I'm knitting this on a 2.25 millimeter needle. Now usually with my husband's um, socks I knit on 2.5, but because I kind of want to shrink it up a little bit, I'm doing everything on a 2.25 millimeter needle. This was done a uh, two by two rib. Yeah, I think that's pretty much all the information. Oh, and um, my sock needles are, my favorite are Red Lace, um, Chiago Red Lace. Those are my favorites. So yeah, 
all of that is in there and I'm hoping to finish those. There's no real deadline for me um, for those except for Christmas. <laughs> so I'm just having fun from time to time um, getting these socks done. And I completely forgot to show it to you guys the last, last video. That's it. That's, that's it. Okay. The next thing that is going to be on my needles as soon as my Swanchito is done, um, is my sweater for Tolemata yarn. So this basket is from Savoie Baskets that she so generously gave to me. So I'm currently hosting, um, my little Tolemata yarn stash. This is uh, going to be a fun sweater that I cannot wait to knit up. So I did my swatch and we're all good. So I skeined up the first color. And um, this, this yarn is Tore Mata Yarns in her DK base, which is uh, 115, 115 yards, 100% superwash merino. No, 115 grams, 251 yards. Really beautiful. So it's a lovely gray fade. Let me see if I can pick these all up for you. So this is gonna be a super fun sweater that I can't wait to get started on. Uh, I drafted up the pattern, I wrote up the pattern, I did my swatch, and when I'm all set to go, I literally just need to cast on. Um, and I was hoping to do that the other day, but I just did not get a chance um, after doing my swatch. So this is going to be on my needles very soon. As soon as I can finish the cuff on that Swanchito, oh my God. As soon as I finish the cuff on that Swanchito, that is my last sweater on the needles. I'm finishing off everything that I have. I love it. I love it. Um, so yes, this is going to be the next sweater. And then I also have um, a new sweater design in mind for the girls. And then I may do an adult version of that one. It might be really fun. But that one, um, yeah. So I have a little sweater idea in mind for the girls. All right. So that is going to be on my needles very, 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 very soon. By the next podcast, it's on my needles. You heard it here. Okay, so the next step is things that I got in the mail for some prizes. Um, I did an entire YouTube haul for Knit Picks, so that is also up on the channel if you are interested in kind of the yarny stuff that I got. I kind of like doing those separate. Um, so if you're not interested in that, but then you can just watch the podcast. Um, for some prizes, the first up is I received a gorgeous project bag from... Um, her Instagram name and shop name is Mrs. Cassiopeia K, who is one of my incredible test knitters. She's test knit so much for me and like is a crazy fast knitter. So here is her little card. And her bag is so well made. Um, I was so impressed with the size. It's huge, you guys. And look at this print. I mean, come on. You have like a little bear, a little rabbit. Oh, you have them on this side. See? You have a little bear and flowers and rabbit. I mean, come on. It's taking me everything not to keep this one for myself. But it will be a amazing prize for the Stash Busters, Cal. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I'll link her shop down below if you'd love to go grab a bag. I would definitely, she's brand new and making bags. I mean, it's so well made. Like, look at all of the inside. Has so many pockets. Like, again, I was so impressed with this bag. So thank you so much. Um, and I will add this to the prize bin. The next up is um, Sue and Paula from Stitch and Sisters. Uh, they contacted me uh, wanting to donate a really fun boxy tote like boxy bag. So this one I've seen so many times and I've actually never had one. Um, absolutely amazing. So you can, ha you open it up in here and then you have your skeins of yarn and you can either like knit with it and it's just awesome. I would definitely have a fun pair of socks in here. They have their logo stitch in sisters. Super, super cute. Really love this bag absolutely gorgeous so absolutely love it you can have it on your desk you know your yarn popping out just super cute so thank you so much sue and paula for donating this amazing bag and this also is going to go for the stash busters cow if you're a maker of any kind and would love to donate to the podcast definitely send me an email or um, a message on ravelry an email is best um so that i can get to you quicker okay you guys that's it for the knitting 
I'm going to be showing off some quilting. So if you are not interested in the quilting segment, thank you so much for checking out the podcast and I hope you come again next time. So quilting is something that I used to do last year and I have not done in a while, but I have all the fabric and the tools. I was about to say yarn. No, not yarn. Um, to do a quilt and I had started it last year. I absolutely, and I'm not a quilter or a sewer. I am god awful. But this one kind of seems like one I can do. So it is out of the book, um, Quilt As You Go Made Modern. And I am doing the, let me show you the name of the quilt, the Solstice, I think it is. Yeah, Solstice Parade. So it's this quilt right here. It's so easy. So I bought some jelly rolls last year and I bought some extra fabric and I cut them all in the two and a half inch strips. So I am going to be doing 56 blocks. The way, um, for anybody who's not familiar with the quilt as you go, is you quilt up an entire square with the backing, fa with the backing and you quilt it. So what's gonna happen is when you attach your backing, like the back, uh, okay, sorry, my words are getting the best of me. You attach the batting with it, you quilt it, and then when you attach the backing, the fabric, then what you're gonna do is um, you're gonna just stitch in the ditch, so every square you're gonna stitch around, so it's gonna make it, but all your intricate quilting is on the front, and then in the back is just kinda like the squares. So I am having to do 56 of these blocks, and my goal is to finish this quilt by Christmas. We'll see. I can, I can, I can get it done. I can do it, guys. I can do it, right? Have faith in me. So this is the first eight. And then I'm just gonna try, because um, I physically cannot fit in this screen. Like this is, it's gonna, it's, it says it's a lap throw size, like. Trying. So it's huge. So this is gonna be eight tall and then seven wide. So these are the squares. I'm just gonna go like this so you guys can see them all. And there might be mistakes. Be kind. I am not um, the best sewer. See like here, it's not perfect, but I think it's pretty good. Nobody's going to see that. So yes, yeah, so this is the first eight. And I want to say that I finished another eight. So I have this block. So this is the size before I quilt them together. And um, what I'm doing is I'm going to be doing a lot more of them. And then I'm going to be quilting some up and piecing them together. But I needed to order more uh, batting. So I have that on the way because I physically do not have enough batting. You saw that. That was a floof. We, it went somewhere. Um, yeah, so I do not have enough batting for finishing the quilt, so I ordered that, so hopefully that's on its way. Um, I need, like I said, I need to do 56 squares, and I finished 16. So, 40 squares to go. And in, the, in one night, I can finish, I would say like three, four squares, if not more. So really, I can bang this out pretty quickly. I'm hoping by the end of November that the quilt top is done and then I just need to do the batting or the backing. It's going to drive me bonkers. The backing and then the um, the border, which I've never done either really like professionally. So I really want this to be a nice quilt. I don't want to look at it and think all of my mistakes. I just really want to look at it and be proud of it. So I want to take my time and give myself that time. So this color right here, that yellow, that's actually the one that I purchased for the backing fabric. And I just think it goes beautifully with like all the yellows and things. So this is the one that I purchased for the border as well as the, the backing. You guys, today was time change here and I was up at 5 a.m. So this is why, this is why I'm a little tired. So yeah, so these are the new squares. One, and then the second, whoop! Get that one after two. Then 
this one, and then, oh, this one. So yeah, so these eight are done, and I'm gonna wait a little bit before I sew these up together, just because I wanna make sure like the color palette looks great um, throughout the whole quilt. So I just did the first eight to really see the length and see how big it was gonna be, and I'm loving the size of it, because I want it to be on our couch, and you know, for us with the girls to really just cuddle all together, that's really my hope. So I want this quilt done, like I said, for Christmas morning. No, it's not a Christmas quilt. I don't care. I just want it to be a quilt that is done for our family. So really, really, really super excited. And I'm going to keep giving you guys updates um, every podcast. So I hope you guys love that. It's kind of a little extra segment in there um, to add on to that. But yeah, so that is all the knitting and the quilting. So if you are only here for the makes, um, that is it. And I will see you next time. But if you are wanting a little bit more going on in the life, Today, um, like I said, is Sunday, and I dropped off the girls early this morning to my parents for the very first time, so they're not here. You don't even hear them, um, because me and my husband want a break. <laughs> very plain and simple. We are, the four of us, um, quarantined together. Uh, my husband works from home, and I am home with the girls. So we are, the four of us, 24-7 together, which, thank God my husband is my best friend, which... You know what? We get along great with the girls. Everything goes great. But sometimes I do need a little break from my children. So my parents are going to do this every few weekends and it just gives us the time and me gives me the time to really sit down, do a full podcast, a few recordings. It just really helps with the workload, anything we need to do in town and get. And I mean, it's all things that, you know, real adults do. <laughs> so yes, um, another update on our town. Um, we are now back into a normal-ish phase. Um, so we are out of that orange phase uh, that we were in where things were shut down again. So we are now back up, which is great. Uh, yeah, just making sure we wear a mask everywhere and being, um, you know, washing hands, staying away from people. We barely socialize with anybody. So, um, yeah, so we're just trying to keep up our normal pace. I'm trying to have a normal routine, you know, the new normal. That's it. I think that's what every single person is doing right now and trying to do. So I'm trying to also put myself in my makes and really do like a lot of quilting at the house um you know just control things that i can and that i'm having fun with the girls are doing amazing they're talking a lot more which is great so really loving that I'm just working harder with them on their speech therapy so yeah so don't think there's much um today like i said i'm going to be doing a q and a episode and then i'm going to be recording a few things so all of that is going to get done today but I just wanted to come and do a fun podcast episode for you all. So I hope that you are having an amazing day wherever you are in the world. And as always, you guys, happy knitting. Until next time, bye. <laughs>